I don't want to waste your time, so there won't be an intro. Today, I thought it would be fun to talk about player rating in Rainbow Six Pro League, specifically the player rating algorithm that CGG is using. Here is how their stats look like, in case you're not familiar with it. As you can see, they collect all kinds of stats for a game, and then they use these to calculate a rating for every player. And that's a pretty nice thing, because it allows you to directly compare players using only one number. And in this video, we are going to reverse engineer the formula that they are using to get to these numbers. Quick disclaimer at the start, this will obviously involve math, so if you have an allergy or a phobia, you might want to turn off now. That being said, let's start by quickly going over the different stats that are being collected. First, we have the obvious stuff like kills, deaths, rounds and plus minus. But then we have some more advanced stats like OK, which stands for opening kills and counts how often a player got the first kill in a round. And conversely, OD, which counts how often a player was the first one to die in a round. HS stands for headshot percentage, KD is kills divided by deaths, KPR is kills per round, SRV is the percentage of rounds that a player survived, and KOST is the percentage of rounds where a player either got a kill, planted or defused a bomb, survived, or got traded after dying. 1vx counts how many 1v2s, 1v3s, and so on were won by a player, and plant and defuse are pretty obvious. From one of their blog posts, we also know which of the stats find their way into the rating. From all the publicly available stats, the algorithm uses everything apart from headshot percentage, but there's also something special going on with opening kills. They make it so an opening kill counts more if you don't immediately die after getting that opening kill, which makes a lot of sense. Apart from the public information, they also use the amount of team kills, the amount of multi-kills, and how often the player was traded after dying, or how often he was not traded after getting a kill. But since these stats aren't public anyways, we don't really need to concern ourselves with them. So now we've got a good enough idea on how the player rating works. But what I want to know is exactly how much each of these stats contribute to the final rating. For example here, if Penko increased his KPR from 0.83 to 0.9, how much would his rating increase by? So how do we go about solving a problem like this? Something that always helps is considering a simpler case. In this rating system that I made up, there is only one stat that is being tracked, KPR. And based on that stat alone, the system calculates a rating. Now we just plot which KPR leads to which rating, and we can see the linear connection. And in order to calculate our rating, if we had a KPR of, let's say, 0.4, we just need to figure out the equation for this line, which is, in its general form, y equals m times x plus b which in our case is rating r equals m times the kpr plus b. To get m, we need to subtract r2 and r1 and divide by kpr2 minus kpr1. For that, we just insert the values from our first two points, and after solving, we get that m is equal to 1.5. In order to find b, we just insert the r and kpr values from any point on our line, solve it, isolate b, and we get our result, b equals 0.25. And we're done. Now we know which kpr leads to which rating. You need to take your kpr, multiply by 1.5, and then add 0.25. For a kpr of 0.4, for example, we set kpr equal to 0.4, evaluate, and we get a rating of 0.85. But of course, our original problem isn't quite that easy, because instead of having one output dimension and one input dimension, we actually have one output dimension and nine input dimensions. However, this doesn't do much to our formula. We just need to add the additional factors. For our simple rating, it was r equals m times kpr plus b. But if we want to consider all the factors, it becomes r equals an intercept z, plus a times your opening kills, plus b times your opening deaths, plus c times your kills per round, 
and so on and so forth for every single factor. And sure, it becomes longer, but if you look only at the equation, it doesn't actually become more complex. But it does introduce some problems. First of all, we are dealing with 10 dimensions now, so we can't just plot the graph anymore and see the relationship that way. But the main problem is that since there are always so many variables changing from player to player, we can never isolate the effect that one variable has on the rating. If we had something like this for example, it would be easy to tell what c is equal to, but we just don't have that kind of data. Luckily though, there were some smart people around a long time ago who figured out how to solve something like this. The actual math behind all of that is super interesting I think, but I'll spare you the details. Bottom line is, we can just feed all of the data into Excel and it's going to spit out the solution. Here we have the raw data. Our output variable is on the far left and all of our input variables are on the right. So for the first line, this would be the equation that we want to solve. We are looking for values for A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H such that all of this together equals 0.82. Now let's let Excel do its magic and here we have our solution. Ta-da! Yeah, just kidding of course. Let me remove all the irrelevant stuff. So this is it right here. These coefficients correspond to our A, B, C and so on. And now we can finally solve the original question that I had. By how much does your rating increase if you increase only your KPR by let's say 0.1? Your rating increases by 0.1 times the coefficient for KPR, which is 0.714, so the end result is 0.0714. This means that if you increase only your KPR by 0.1, your rating increases by 0.071. And on the way to answering this question, we also answered all the similar questions for the rest of the stats. If you manage to plant one more bomb for example, your rating will increase by 0.015. So after seeing the actual numbers, you might ask yourself, why would CGG choose such weird numbers for their formula? And the truth is, they didn't. What we've got right here is not the actual formula that they are using. Because remember, they are also using private information, so right off the bat, there wasn't even a chance that we would be able to recreate the exact formula. What we've got right here is merely a computer's best guess as to how we need to weight these numbers such that their sum is as close as possible to this number. And this becomes apparent when we compare the rating that we calculated through our coefficients with the actual rating from CHDG. As you can see, our method is always a bit off, but honestly, not by a lot. And as far as I'm aware, there is no better way of predicting the actual rating other than what we've done here. Now, there is one more thing worth talking about. If we take a closer look at the formula, and especially the values of the coefficients, we can find out which stat CGG deemed to be the most important one. But in order to make an accurate comparison, we need to standardize these coefficients, which I did here. And to no one's surprise, kills per round is by far the most important stat, and I'm pretty sure that it should be that way too. What I'm not too sure about is how winning 1v axis seems to be almost insignificant. Clutching around is worth about the same as getting two opening kills, and it's worth less than getting a plant down. But I don't want to make a definitive statement because I might just be missing something here. Okay, that's basically it. Now we are able to approximately calculate player ratings without knowing the actual formula, and we learned about which stats CGG considers to be the most important ones. So what do we do with that? Um, nothing really I guess, that was more or less just for fun. It might actually be kind of useful for coaches and analysts because they can use it on scrim stats to make comparisons easier, but apart from that it probably doesn't have that many practical applications. Nevertheless, I hope that you learned something new and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Typically people don't tend to enjoy these videos as much, but since I really like them, I'll just continue doing them. But don't worry, there will be plenty of other content too. Thanks for watching.